we're waiting Итак, for him to start our panel discussion. So today, with us we have Dmitry Gavrilets, who is the director of Sberbank. Hello again. Happy to hear your opinion. Among new speakers we have Roman Latyonov, director OTC Derivatives Moscow Exchange. And we have Eugene Igorov again on the stage. The head of uh, Algo Trading Alpha Bank. Ready to start. Today we have a very difficult topic which cannot be embraced. Other panel discussions uh, were devoted to sport, to volumes, to arms race, to number of platforms. And we discussed the demand among the clients and the necessity to improve uh, coverage among the platforms. Just touched upon that. Today's current session is going to go in detail on what is going to what is going on in the effects and interest rate derivatives market? I'd like to give the floor, taking this opportunity, since we have online connection with Roman Zavalyov, who is the senior vice president of Raiffeisen Bank. I'd like to ask him to demonstrate and share funny pictures of his and share his own uh, overview. And then, we are going to continue our discussion on the topic we have. Roman, please take the floor. Thank you, Sergey. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'm very happy to join you online. I cannot surprise anyone that volatility uh, helped us at the beginning of the year. And the crisis we see particularly thing happening that the client activity is growing, but uh, as for the quality, it boils down to the basic tools. Swaps, uh, forwards, uh, options, IRS, out of the interest rate uh, instruments, well, uh, those required. But uh, we entered the crisis with ready to use infrastructure and allowed us to give high quality service, even though everybody wants on distant mode. And uh, like spot market and what are Tom said about the uh, market makers, those providing a random prices. We heard the same pain points from derivative clients, particularly on e-market. I'd like to brief you on this workflow using my presentation. Right now, you can see old school when the client goes to the sales manager, then to the trader, and then it goes to the reverse side using voice commands, uh, using chats, a uh, long time, non efficient, remotely particularly, when you need to find those colleagues who are who is lost, talking about the operation risks, this even shouldn't be mentioned. And on the market, uh, we have a very popular e platform, so called so called e platform. Firms. But we have uh, a lot of underlying uh, blockstones uh, which they face uh, in difficult times. This is shift to manual processing if uh, is size more than X, if uh, Canon more than uh, Y. And I would like to mention that automation and the shift to RFQ to the manual trader is hardly the backbone of e-platform. And the major problem for the clients is that the changes in this respect are happening unexpectedly for the client. And this harms client's experience. Undoubtedly, from our perspective, this is more about marketing rather than digitalization. So in our, in our part, it looks a bit different. We excluded this year uh, manual trade in uh, quoting FX swaps. We don't have it at all. Uh, the clients' appetites are growing, they're changing. We see new 
order for new sites, for new instruments. We spend just one effort to update and then 100% of E approach. We don't need to uh, have a labor manual trader. We uh, request the price, we get it. In forthcoming future, we'd like to move a bit forward, like to exclude the sales component of this process as any additional chain and a part of this chain uh, complicates um, the communication. It needs to bring additional value from our perspective. This value is questioned, and on the slides, that's how we see the process of work with e-derivatives in the future, is what we are at right now, what we're going to achieve in the forthcoming future. We're actively working on integration of this system in new S class and options, uh, uh, sovereign loans, bonds, equities. So we believe that the future is behind that. Thank you. Thank you, Roman. Very precise and structurized overlook. We'd like to discuss this uh, slide with our panelists on the stage. It seems to me, regardless of the great image of the future, which we can see on the slide, there are some underlying uh, uh, bl uh, stumbling blocks which we need to discuss. From my perspective, there is a basic issue which differentiates e trading derivatives on a spot uh, market is that the price discovery is the process we've been discussing a lot. Is the spot market can be seen on many markets. Uh, they are competing. When we discussed what the Moscow Exchange for Sberbank is, this is the price discovery first of all. The question is the following. If we look at the wide range of uh, interest rate derivatives class, can we say that we have platforms where the price discovery can be the case? If you allow, the difference of derivative markets from spot markets is the absence of quick representation. If in spot markets we trade with foreigners and they have the access and locals to EBS and they have the access to our market, so on wrong way risk cannot be mitigated and undertaken by the foreigners. There is on the right way approach. This is the principal difference. And the second difference, which is brought about by that, the spot market digitalization came after the launch of Moscow Exchange, as we see it right now. From the perspective of derivatives, the situation is a bit different. Digitalization uh, is already the case on many instruments. We're waiting for Roman and his company in this uh, distant, uh, light future as our clients for forwards and swaps are uh, enjoying their transactions uh, in machine. They, they don't have onboarding within the process at all. So this is absolutely of electronic nature. And we are expecting other banks to join us, which will be able to digitalize this service on their part. So for us, jointly to, to move forward with a number of uh, e-cores to adopt the risk transition environment platforms to transit this risk. But, uh, uh, look, people are talking about uh, ba basic uh, swaps. Uh, you're talking about some products of the platform. The credit risk uh, plays a uh, uh, good role in the pricing of a particular instrument, and uh, can we say that the uh, challenge is met, and this is a vanilla sky uh, 
instrument now, so as long as you have uh, some sanctions and your trading curve uh, of uh, FX uh, swaps with residents would uh, really go away from the swaps uh, that you can trade uh, uh, through the Moscow exchange. So what is this baseline price that you are going to assume uh, uh, and give the clients? As long as your credit capacity with non-residents is enough, then you can take this price or that price and uh, try to match them, uh, but spending your credit resources. Now, uh, how, how would you do that? Uh, how would you approach that? Uh, well, it's a challenge. I don't think it's an issue, but uh, it uh, means uh, that uh, you also need to pay it to put into your rates uh, the credit risk. It is a more complex uh, thing to, de to do, but in your price it should be reflected. You know how much it would cost to hedge your risk. Uh, if uh, no hedging, then how to internalize that uh, risk, and etc. And then to be a market maker at the derivatives market is a more complex story than being a market maker at the FX spot market because you already have a credit risk so involved. Uh, you know, which is not uh, utilized transparently. I think the, uh, I also was part of a panel a couple of years ago, and indeed uh, the derivatives market is much more complex uh, compared to the sports market. Uh, you need to think about how to get uh, the uh, primary liquidity pools access uh, through the primary brokers. Uh, in, the point, in the derivatives case, so this is a different story. If you take more complex stories from the point of view of credit limits like 2008 or 2014, and the main challenge of the derivatives market was that we never had good indicators there. Because by design, you would have a mix of quotes, uh, from different geographies, uh, and uh, the baseline can go away uh, much uh, further than the spread that you are quoting to your clients. And in this sense, the situation in the market has changed, and uh, has changed in the spork market. So we saw a nice slide from Gleb, who showed how many arbitration cases uh, uh, between uh, UBS and Moscow Exchange have there been. Uh, in terms of arbitration, it's not because uh, people are you know, lagging behind in that race, but it's just because they didn't have enough credit lines to to cover that uh, arbitrage. Uh, regarding the derivatives market, uh, I think now is the case when uh, there could be some market standard, at least a local market standard, introduced. And I now to, would like to give the floor to Roman Loktionov, uh, who is in charge of the SPFE uh, market, um, so that he can share with us uh, how that segment of the market uh, developed in the past 12 months, and are we close to any standard products uh, where such a risk premium can uh, have the least effect on, and can we discover prices on the conditions that are OK with the major players? Thank you, Sergey. Indeed, we are in this uh, PFE market, and uh, we worked with the team quite nicely this year. What did we do in terms of development? Uh, we, uh, in September, we have this uh, uh, um, uh, no uh, mode of uh, Trading, we put in some filters, and we have some uh, uh, half liquidity in uh, key uh, times. It is uh, looks like uh, order books in uh, some key uh, timings. If you take the interest rate swaps, uh, then using our filters. Uh, we have uh, 10 small order books uh, from one term to, uh, to 10 years. We 
analyze this with the participants, what are the key parameters that are being traded. And based on such parameters and the standards of standard conventions, we had this uh, liquidity pool. So we ask everyone to join so that you can take a look at uh, our pools. Uh, we are uh, filling uh, those pools with uh, the prices, and thanks to Sberbank, Sberbank was the first to support us quite uh, actively, not only morally, but uh, also by quoting quite actively there. The next uh, phase that we hope to do that would push the market forward is that we are now and uh, fix a P gateway. Uh, we are setting up uh, that uh, gateway, which would uh, help uh, participants to bid and uh, make swaps and uh, also uh, bring those uh, uh, transactions uh, for national uh, clearing. And uh, what we want to do is that we want to collect uh, liquidity and become. Well, the, the big goal is to be uh, the pricing center for uh, ruble uh, interest rate derivatives. That's the uh, big uh, idea in mind. There's no this, uh, risk associated that would prevent uh, participants uh, to quote in a simple way through the platform. And uh, the central counterparty, uh, the person of the SPFE market, will, would be able to help that. And Tima, what do you think? This liquidity, which is um, formed uh, electronically in Moscow Exchange uh, through the SPFE, could be this. Uh, uh, price that would help the clients uh, for the uh, purposes and distribution. In reality, I would say, uh, it would much depend on the, uh, the uh, customer base and the client pool that would be uh, uh, trading in that order book. Uh, one of the participants in this SPFE uh, uh, market uh, would be non-residents, and I think the key story here would be whether the exchange uh, uh, would be able to engage non-residents uh, for their order books. If yes, then it would be great. If not, then uh, there uh, would be a credit risk associated with that, uh, as uh, Russia has it uh, generally, so that's the way to that goal. Yeah, and if they manage to do that, to engage the operators, uh, then why not? That's, but that's a challenge. Evgeny Roman, would you be prepared to comment on that? Yes. Regarding the whether Moscow Exchange is prepared to significantly uh, promote and uh, uh, develop derivatives and uh, new instruments, perhaps uh, here I should start with the following. These instruments uh, really differ very much from uh, spot instruments. Uh, there are some vanilla derivatives uh, which are more or less like liquid, uh, a liquid uh, order book. But if you go away from that and uh, start looking at derivatives with uh, interest rates, uh, options, uh, of course there, you know, putting up uh, liquidity on the surface would look like uh, not a, a very promising story. But to me, those instruments, personally, I think I like those uh, instruments because unlike uh, this, you know, uh, fish farming where you can, you know, uh, put in the uh, net and just, you know, uh, uh, really catch a lot of fish, but that is too easy. There you would use a fishing rod where you can catch one fish, but a big one. and. Um, Mm. Uh, many instruments uh, that uh, can be traded from morning to uh, dawn, uh, but uh, in that case, uh, uh, you would have a different story. You won't have a very 
unique uh, uh, deals. But if you have uh, like uh, big clients who found themselves found each other, then both would win, and nobody is going to discuss toxicity. And uh, there, you can set up a good market for big. Uh, uh, healthy clients, including non-residents, and nobody will be complaining against each other unless there's a mistake. If you make a mistake, this would cost you dearly, and uh, the exchange would not cancel that deal if you kind of like uh, change the order, if you change the side or uh, confuse the sides, uh, etc. So these are the reasons why those instruments uh, might be attracted, uh, attractive. Uh, just to, to me personally, and uh, in my new capacity, I would try to really pay even more attention to that. Maybe in some time, not as quickly as we would like to, but the quotes from Alpha and the interest of Alpha and of uh, Alpha's interest in those uh, instruments would be growing. So. Uh, I hope that the uh, market uh, is going to develop. Uh, now, just a couple of words about that. Uh, perhaps a couple of uh, months ago, maybe end of July, early August, we discussed that uh, with the uh, market players. There are no lots in uh, SPFEs, and you can start all the way up from one capital, one cent. Uh, and we thought, uh, do we want to have this uh, uh, floor cut off? Uh, and then, with the uh, participants, we uh, uh, took a look at the uh, uh, pool of market players and realized that uh, we, traditionally speaking, you can do everything or can do nothing. And we should probably do, uh, you know, do anything right now for that, uh, because then the customers are not really prepared to fill up the uh, order books uh, with uh, uh, toxic liquidity, and because this is not of interest uh, to the players because uh, uh, small toxic amounts are of no interest uh, to the players. And second, regarding the non-residents, look at uh, the first panel. We discussed that uh, prices uh, in spots are set at the Moscow Exchange. So before 10 a.m., you would have um, uh, one set of quotes and prices. As soon as Moscow Exchange opens, then prices fluctuate more often, and prices go down. So again, involving uh, non-residents sometimes, but in the Russian field, so to say. And the product here is, uh, in, in our case, is that internally setting uh, uh, prices for Russian derivatives, uh, this is something that we cannot do. Uh, am I right, Dima? The thing is that uh, our markets, well, I mean, we are probably a bit concerned to assume the responsibility, but if you look at the statistics, uh, not fresh statistics, but the uh, um, start of the year statistics, uh, about 50% of the ruble derivatives are actually sold abroad. So we cannot, you know, make the other 50% and impose the, that other 50%. And we don't want to really impose anything on our clients. So we can uh, simply offer such 50%. Uh, and we, banks and uh, uh, HFT and exchange, we are only kind of like uh, helping our clients. Uh, this is up to the corporate clients, uh, which in our uh, case, uh, some exports and uh, a lot of imports. And uh, in Russia, there's a heavy misbalance uh, to one side and uh, kind of like a uh, advice to the other side uh, in the West. Uh, for the spot uh, transactions, it is less visible because there are many buffers there, like private individuals, other banks, etc. So it works a bit differently in the spots market. But for the derivatives market, it is directly associated with the uh, planning horizon and the financial models of corporates. So you have uh, natural rationale behind. Uh, and uh, this is not speculative. It is uh, 
uh, uh, a lot, uh, quite heavily flow driven. Another buffer in spots can be local traders, uh, many of those traders, private, uh, non private. But in the derivatives uh, uh, market, uh, the uh, buffers would be the hedge funds, uh, but they are trading with mostly foreign banks. Uh, maybe 95, 99 percent of those uh, um, hedge funds um, are, are trading with prime brokers. And there is a lot of segregation in terms of the setup and in terms of natural uh, uh, rationale or needs. And there you need to find a balance, uh, and the, uh, this, the solution is not that uh, evident as you would love to have. Uh, Roman, can you perhaps comment on the SPFE market? And I think that the growth of this market uh, is, and the movement towards uh, fair play, what we discussed, uh, an adequate uh, price discovery is, uh, of course, uh, uh, natural. But regarding SPFE markets, we have very warm relations uh, with the colleagues, and I think Raiffeisen was one of the uh, sides to that first historic uh, uh, transaction. So we, as clients, would like to wish our colleagues to find new, unique uh, clients uh, that uh, would trade in ruble, because, uh, you know, trading SPFE with colleagues from Sberbank and Alpha Bank would be uh, somewhat strange. And that we have uh, fixed API in SPFE is a good thing. Uh, uh, swaps options and other derivatives are, are good, uh, but uh, we see also some uh, potential for growth uh, thanks to SPFE as well. Perhaps uh, from more complex derivatives, I would like to come back to more simple derivatives. If we uh, take a look at the uh, FX futures, uh, to Moscow Exchange and the story behind, uh, you would see that it was quite a successful story. We had a number of players uh, present there, uh, but still, despite the fact that there was a lot of diversity uh, in the market, the uh, uh, futures curve uh, basis was actually fluctuating depending on the uh, segment uh, mood. Um, uh, Tim, how do you uh, view this situation? How active uh, are you in futures at Moscow Exchange? We are looking at the market and are trading in that market. Uh, I remember that it was not the story just uh, some time ago. By the way, I joined the Troika Dialogue in uh, 2011, I think. And we never actually stopped uh, such trading. There was some technical uh, suspension, but it was technical transition. Uh, that was. And in this regard, if you draw an analogy to the development uh, in the West, the Chicago Futures Exchange uh, is doing OK. And the futures for the interest rates uh, for the Fed funds, and indeed this is a um, an old instrument with heavy uh, volumes and long history, and it was a model to, you know, to form uh, the uh, same futures uh, derivatives at, uh, in Moscow and uh, one, and uh, it would actually define uh, the changes in the policy of central uh, bank. Uh, more or less, you are uh, trading for the change in the interest rates in future. And that's exactly why we think uh, that, uh, why the uh, Fed fund futures are so popular. People are looking at the Fed fund's uh, uh, futures and more or less uh, draw a curve for the interest rates. Why ruble is outside this story? And can we really launch that same story with the ruble? Because the central bank, in in terms of their monetary policies uh, and its execution is following uh, this exactly way. And uh, mostly people are uh, trying to forecast uh, the interest rate developments, what would be the trajectory. And the central bank actually promised to start publishing its uh, estimates of that. 
Почему? So the guys, why isn't that popular in our country? Do you see any prospect in this respect? Let's start. This is the fundamental tool, small brick, which can be the foundation for pricing on interest rate uh, instruments which are more complicated. Roman, Dmitry, would you like to comment on that, Evgeny? Let me start with that. It's not great, but even bad for the whole economy, since the participants of the economic process have been living in 30 years with this open risk interest rate risk. This is the practice of our business activity. This is conventional. This is changing not that fast. The instruments are popular, but the process is not that fast. Both people, corporates, and banks have got used to living with this open risk, with this constant exposure to the risk. If you look at the balance sheets of the banks, uh, it seems that they have fixed rates in place, but more or less they have floating rates as the bank deposits are revocable, so people uh, run from the banks, the loans have fixed rates mostly, but in fact it is floating. As the corporate come to the bank, they uh, are looking for uh, refinancing opportunities. So there are a lot of activities uh, which can be negotiated, but the transactions are, are in low number. I'd like to object to that. At the conference on uh, Apple FE, we, we saw many things said on the bank portfolio and floating rates are growing rapidly. Yeah, this is, this is more and more popular, day by day. It looks like the next situation. People, even in everyday life, discuss the USD ruble FX, but they do not hedge their risks. They do not have any futures. They don't have their own portfolio based on the risks they see. But this is changing. In this respect, the major driver might be the regulator, which will pay more attention, will not only target the inflation, but going to incentivize banks to shift to floating rates. Yeah, it seems reasonable to me from your perspective, but I'd like to focus on a bit different thing. The market itself of uh, ruble uh, interest rate derivatives is quite example. It's quite simple. We have a flat curve right now, but in fact, the market of futures connected with that is not developed. But it might have been differently. The market chooses the basic instrument to transfer the risk. Why do futures and interest rate cannot be such a product? And is it possible for them to become such a product? Uh, to, be, to, to be brief, there is a relatively small number of participants who want to make those transactions. I would agree with Eugene. We have a low number of uh, participants on the one hand. On the other hand, it is the so-called culture of hedging is uh, in existence in big corporates. We look at all the participants on the biggest banks there are special departments monitoring the effects risk. Even out of top 20 banks, not every one, we, actually they wrote down this uh, required statement on FX risk to the central bank, that's it. This is the case in many corporates. We don't have this hedging culture as for the futures and uh, their products. Together with our um, colleagues from spot markets, 
the futures for interest rate and uh, for FX, we've noticed a trend. Whenever there is uh, interest rate derivatives, um, IR derivatives or FX derivatives, we see the activity on the spot markets, on uh, futures in Roni. If we have most prime IRS, we see the bigger popularity of IRC on uh, uh, federal loan bonds markets. There might be the same uh, participants. We look at the structure of participants. These are not the same. But there is a correlation, actually. If something is... Uh, is is growing. The whole the whole field is growing. As for the instrument selection, we need to remember that if traders trading with each other, no one is going to see it through the end of the year. It's not like a hot hot potato match. It, it might be regarded as a casino approach. But uh, sooner or later, the get together is going to, f to be over. Looking at different derivatives, that's how the um, market has been developed. And there is particular demand on the part of the client. There is a risk which can be hatched, and the value can be added. So the part of this value is retained by the banks in order to develop the product. Any product, um, let it be the car. This is in investment into Samsung. These are big, big products. Those early adopters are paying a higher margin. The part of the value is retained by the bank, then the bank look at how this risk can be to whom this risk can be transferred to make a charge in derivatives these are hedge funds uh, foreign hedge funds since it is not developed in our country and then the question is how to transfer a particular risk to a particular entity which is ready for that risk uh, there are insurance and there are reinsuring companies so how to transfer this risk to a reinsuring company? This is a standard situation for insurance business. And the question is, if you're talking about the exchange uh, instruments, the final risk taker should have the access to exchange. It's more difficult for foreigners rather than locals. You can take a conventional instrument, AIS, uh, add some benchmark, which is not that easy but possible, and just to send this instrument. This is a very short, uh, reasonable way to do that. From my perspective, this is how the market, which market should be traded and which market shouldn't be traded, even if they are interconnected. If there are those which cannot be transferred this risk, and you need to have a futures, for example, Let's stream. Tomorrow the individuals are start trading futures on Roni. It's great. They they are, they are ready to undertake risks. This is what is going on. Uh, particular markets. There are some risk holders who are particular margin ready to undertake this risk. We have a couple of questions in our application for today's session. Uh, current question is the following. What is your view of the development? Is it possible to develop effects and IR derivatives based on a central limited order book or the market is going to work like it is doing today when different counterparties send requests for quotations? We see that there is there are a lot of answers to that question. Do you, do you do you want to comment on that? I do believe if we have streaming, the central limited order book is going to be placed, but IFRS is going to have to offer better, better quotations compared with streaming quarter. Everything is personalized. And in swaps, information leakage is very expensive. 
um, much more expensive than other instruments. So it's more difficult to have similar situations like we have in spots. Thank you. We have swaps. The second question, if if we may see it on the screen, this is the question from Intercontinental Exchange, and it relates to our session, since we are talking about algo trading in derivatives. What is the most significant change to algo trading? And there are some options, uh, better computing capacity, quantum computer development, new types of data, or something different, the use of cloud technologies. Maybe a little bit uh, light with that, since this is more of a technological nature, I'll like call it to answer that question. So within these five minutes, we have, I'd like to talk about separate class of derivatives, which we haven't elaborated on. These are options, uh, FX options, where the situation is far from being transparent. Moscow exchange has been developing options together with futures for a long time already. But as far as I know, uncovered positions, the interest is kind of of a flesh of nature with big players coming to the market, which are following the market. And look at the market as where the price discovery is interesting, where clearing is reasonable, and you can see kind of client flow situation. Dmitry, do you offer options through exchange, FX options? No, our algo platform don't have any. We're not integrated in this story. So far, there is a question of value of such integration and such trading. The risk transition is quite developed in OTC. And in in intelligence component in effect op options is quite huge. So the information leakage is more expensive, so the more cautious you should be. Is it possible to create, maybe you need to reshape in order to trade in volatility through centralized platform might be more convenient. There are some aspects. The first and the most important is the price risk uh, facilitation, second is technological uh, uh, preparedness of key players, and the third is client base, um, bilateral client interest behind these technological players. If this cocktail is in place, so it might be reasonable. Do you have automatic pricing for your FX options on your platform? We FX options are not that popular. They are interesting to clients as a solutions, as a part of more complicated solutions. And everything is automatic. Roman, how do you see yourself on the option markets? Do you see any any growth growth points? I was very surprised to see that there was no demand for vanilla options. That everything is quoted automatically. Uh, in ruble particularly against all uh, currencies, uh, bilaterally OTC. This, is, uh, this boils down to the question of limits as for the centralized order book for the options. We need to answer uh, the question why do we want to see that for any place to have access to the market and trade in uh, that market without any limits. But something tells me that the cost of this credit facilitation is going to be huge. From our perspective, we aim at OTC uh, story. If the colleagues are ready to offer anything interesting, we are ready to look into that. I'd like to comment. I'd like to 
uh, clarify. I, I'm talking about natural clients. We don't see uh, interest particularly in FX options from uh, big corporates. Uh, talking about banks, uh, this is a relevant story. We have one minute to... to conclude our session. I'd like to elaborate on options a little bit. Yesterday, the day before yesterday, I looked at the statistics on option markets. They are developing uh, FX options, uh, IR derivatives, but the volumes are not that big when there's going to be more sugar in this field, and ants are going to join us. Dear colleagues, can we have answers to the last latest poll as a concluding uh, slide of our session. You can see that the biggest changes are in terms of computing capacity. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's give a round of applause to the participants of today's panel and let's continue.